I have like a sense of deja vu. Deja vu. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Tony, you got you got anything to get off your chest? <laughs> Ma'am, how are yeah. you? Sipping and dipping. Musa. I almost went downstairs and got my sage stick and burnt it. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to hold on to that all night. Can we to this week? Can right. we talk? <laughs> King again. Let me get in both your asses right now. You two, I love you. You my brother, you my sister. And I know that you want the best for me. And you want me to find the love of my life and get back in this dating game. I am, oh wait, wait. I am done. Because this week, has been a very trying week for us single bitches. Uh, it should be single. It should be a trying week for you married bitches. But for us single bitches looking for a good, trusting, loyal man, we're done. All right. So let me start. I live here in Massachusetts, home of the Boston South Text. Emu or Emi. Emu. Doka. Emo. What? Emu. Imu Udoka. Okay, Imu Udoka of the, the head coach of the Boston Celtics legit was cold stone busted and he's out for the rest of the season that hasn't even started yet. They spent it for the whole season? No. Oh, no wait, I saw it on the news. They're making the final announcement this week and I'm pretty sure they, they keep saying He's potentially going to be out for the whole season, which means in Boston, that Negro is out for the whole season. Let's not get it twisted because they've already been hyping up his assistant coach on the news. So you already know. He must want to get coach. rid of him then because that makes no sense. Oh, he's yeah. oh, he gone. But look at He, ooh, black Jesus. Cheated on Nia motherfucking Love Jones Long. If you can cheat on Nia motherfucking Love Jones Long, I got nothing. I'm out. I'm out of this game. I've retired. Chris, if you know her, let her know to come on the podcast because we got to talk about it because I just don't understand how you- Remember, they've been engaged, engaged for seven years. So yeah. there must be a reason. Someone and else had saying, a kid. That, and they there had must a be a, a reason why they ain't married. But they, you right on that one. Because I ain't going to be engaged to nobody for seven years. No, that's just ridiculous. But at the end of the day, I'm like, they produced a child. And when the news, when the news came out, it was like, it was a, a, a an affair but a consensual affair. So that's why I don't understand the whole suspension thing. Exactly. Well, because, it's a, the Boston, because they have a morality clause. That's what came out in the news. They have a morality clause. Anything to, you know. Just an excuse. He ain't married. Well, Stephen, Stephen A. Smith went off on the whole thing. He says, I know many, many sports individuals, NFL, all across the sports coaches measure, that coaches doing all kinds of mad stuff. What, and, and the Celtics leaked this. The Celtics leaked yes, this they information. Did. And they're the ones who, and you don't hear about any without any of the white you know, coaches are doing crazy. Like Urban Meyer was, she, she did something, whatever, when he was the coach of Flor the Florida, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was messing around with some girl. He didn't get fired. He didn't get suspended. But let's even talk about let's even talk about the elephant in the room with ESPN and all these sports channels haven't even they 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 vilified Michael Vick and Colin Kaepernick for some minor shit. And you got Brett Favre that they they just made one little thing. One little story about it, and it's not been heard of or talked about since on ESPN about Brett Favre fucking robbing Millions. the welfare system in Mississippi to build his daughter a fucking volleyball court. Millions. Millions. I went, I went to USM, 
and around that time, and I'm just I'm just telling you, for the simple fact for them to even give this man this money and then him pretend like he didn't know where it was coming from, and then the emails actually showed it. This stuff happened ages ago, ages ago, and it's just really coming out. And when I say Mississippi, it's like there are people I knew that still had outhouses, poor as fuck. And then when you look at the population of the state and how many families are actually on welfare, it is like less than 1%. And they're giving all that federal money to these white men. Mm. Uh, and then he knows he's wrong because in his text messages, which they've since come out, mm-hmm. or emails have since come out, he's very aware of the ramifications. He's like, he is. He is. Well, you know, if I get this money that is not appropriated for me, is it going to come out because I don't want, you know, it's going to ruin his reputation? And he has only paid back $1 million. No, sir, you owe like $25 million. Yes. But back to your yeah. thing about Lisa, I mean, about um, um, Neil Long. Neil Long. Why do I call it Lisa Long? Oh, Neil Long. Long. It sounds like a porn star. I, 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 feel for, I feel for her, but at the same time, it was a consensual relationship. Now, I know part of it could be that, you know, oh, well, she worked for him or worked for the organization, and it could be a kind of like, you know, um, level of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't even matter. It was consensual. And I do believe, like Chris just said, that they leaked it. Yeah, they did leak it. Get rid of that man for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not going to show, I, I, all, all day, they have been posting pictures of the alleged woman that he had this consensual relationship with. And I'm not going to post, I was going to show it to you guys on the podcast, but I'm not going to, because you know what, since when we, before we started recording, it came, I was watching the news and they were like, the pictures that are showing the woman that they're showing is not the woman that, he supposedly had the relationship with. So I was like, I'm not going to even... Is, is, I, it, is it a black it. woman they're showing the pictures of? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think so. So, and she's like the vice president of player... Personnel. Personnel, whatever. Well, then, hell no. They were just about equals. There's no way in the world they can they can make this about like a hierarchy or something. No, That's forget right. that. Exactly. Because it's at the end of the day, the people are like, because I've been seeing, all, I've been watching it all day on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram. And it's like, oh, he actually did the fucking, he did the most. He fucked his work wife. And I'm like, mm, I thought I got Consensually. Huh? Consensually. That, that, yeah, consensually. But at the end of the day, I'm like, like again, Chris, you made a valid point. Of course, as a movie fan and love jones fan i'm like oh me along jesus christ she's so beautiful she's got everything she's it got don't matter i don't know why people do that it yeah i don't matter. either yeah it doesn't matter i do it i do it i do it because i'm a single woman and i'm like well damn i ain't nobody but who the hell's gonna be faithful to me if if a if a if a man can't be faithful to me along who the hell's gonna be faithful to me that's why i take myself out of the equation i know i'm wrong for saying that but this is just how I feel. And I'm sure that there's a lot of women out there that feel the same way. It is what it is. But what it also, is. I'm going to also say, I don't know Nia Long. So I don't know how she is as a human being, as a mate, as a lover, as a best friend, as a confidant in a relationship that maybe there's, you know, there's always reasons why people cheat because they're missing out on something. But then I don't care how, what kind, if she was a fucked up woman, if if she berated you every day when you come home, fucking leave her and go get you somebody else. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, uh, I guess that, I guess that's easier said than done because they have a kid together. Have you ever, okay, we we all know that, I mean, 
I'm not one to put a whole lot of like, oh my God, you know, this person cheated or whatever. I do agree that sometimes things shit does happen or whatever, mm -hmm. but you, you should have a little bit more respect for your relationship and the person that you're with, even at the end. Because a lot of times the relationship is at the end and people decide to like, you know, oh, it it just happened. Well, not really. <laughs> kind of planned it out a little bit. You know, nothing just happened. But I, I don't, I'm not going to berate somebody totally just because they fucking cheated on a fiance. Yeah, but you're right. A, a season long suspension. That's ridiculous. But why suspend them? Why that's suspend ridiculous. them? Because a I violation of the organization's no. guidelines. Like They're, no one's ever done that before. Because they're working up to fire him or something. Something yeah, else. I agree. Not. They're going to so get rid of him. suspension with pay? Mind you, uh, I would imagine so, but mind you, he did take them to the finals last year. Hello? That's what I'm Thank saying. You. And I do have tickets for November 28th. And, and, and win. it is Boston. You know, Boston has a history. So it is Boston with their whole racist ass history. With is the, you know, who knows? He was the fifth coach in the past twenty five years to reach the NBA Finals in his first season as head coach, and the first since twenty nineteen. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was the first. I didn't even know that um, others had done it before, but I, I thought he was the first. Anyway. He was the first rookie coach to win multiple game sevens in his first postseason. Yep. They're going to fuck with that. Of course they are. They're going to tarnish this man's character. Yeah, I just don't see a whole thing. That doesn't make any damn sense. That doesn't make any damn sense. And you've got the, and maybe Chris, I'm going to have to, I'm going to need you to interject in as a man, because I've just been hearing tidbits of it. Isn't there like a um, coach, an NFL coach? And a yeah. baseball coach in Arizona, the white man, that he's now about to sell the teams because right. he was blasted. Over years. Over years. Over years of shit that he's been doing. Racist Racist, shit. racist and misogynist shit. stuff. Misogyn yep. Misogynistic shit that he's been doing for years. And now we've got this black man. Listen, as a fan and of the And he got fined $10 million. And, and, and now he's selling the team, but he's like, but uh, Stephen A. Smith had a direct message for him talking about if it walks like a duck and cracks like a duck, then, you know, he keeps talking about, you know, he, he, he made a, a, a quote, the, the owner said, you know, in an unforgiving society as we have now, you know, all the good things that I did are, are no longer valid. And she's, he's like, you, can, you can't. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. All right, I let's mean, go on. Let's this is, on. yeah, it, it, listen, at the end of the day, it's a double edged sword, and everybody's all up in arms on, on social media, as I was with regards to Neil Long, because I am, we are black women and black people, and we're like, really? Nia fucking Long? Bro, like seriously, emu. It's not, but it's not about that. I, I mean, know, look, but it's you like, can have you can have if mint chocolate chip is your favorite ice cream, and you can have it every day, every day, the best ice cream in the world. Sometimes you just gonna want a little vanilla. Whew. Oh Lord Jesus! <laughs> what the name? And that or is so I, or so I heard. I heard this all. I heard this all day. From men at the office. This is not that now. It's like y'all read a playbook. <laughs> and on that note, I'm pulling up my notes from the uh, Married at First Sight. So let's get into it. Oh. Lord. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I watched everything today. I watched the episode of Married at First Sight. I watched the after party and I started, stopped, leading up to and went back to the Kevin Frazier, like, what's happening now episode. Oh, the leading up to part? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the only reason why I stopped it was because I'm a little bitter. I'm a little salty because when I watch the Kevin Frazier shows, I'm like, why aren't the three of us sitting there? Like, you know, I mean, come on, Kevin. 
to show us a little love, Kevin Frazier, and get us on them seats. So what was what was what show is that? I I don't understand. There's another. There's, there's a leading up to what has happened. What's led up to this season? Yeah. What's going on now? And I now all of the all of the remember how they do the um preview in the beginning before the the episodes start. And they have Kevin Frazier with his experts, his experts mm -hmm. giving their, you know, take on who's going to make it and who's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. They did that and they followed up with that episode. And then he had those same people back. And now all of a sudden they're changing, they're flipping the scripts and they're talking about, and they showed some sneak peeks of some scenes okay. that. Mm. Well, let's get into the show. So let's get into the show. So who are we going to talk about first? Let's talk about. Um, let's start with. Go ahead. Who, who was the first first um couple to come up on the screen? Wasn't it Alexis and Justin? <laughs> well, let's get into it. Shahida, Chris, I'll let you guys take the lead, and then I'll put throw in my two cents. I I I have one thing to say. Well, a couple things. I misread her so incredibly bad. If you go back and listen to us, like the first two episodes, you all pegged her. And I kept saying, no, no, no. She was into him. She likes him. And I thought that they were going to be kind of like a couple that would shock us. Yeah, she shocked us. She is so manipulative. She is, and, and remember last week or so, you brought it up from, because you watched Whatever Happened Live, that she said that he couldn't get it up sexually. She fucking lied. She's a, she's, what's, a, it, I, I want to say she Well, she implied it. She didn't say that. She implied it. She did. She did. But from this episode, we see that she has... In front of the camera, lovey dovey dovey. I'm, I'm I'm gonna work this out. What does she even call him? I'm sorry, husband. You know I know how, all that shit, but behind closed doors, she she's not letting this man touch her, touch her. So all this old, you know, implying that he probably didn't get it up or whatever. She's the she's worse than I thought she was. I mean, she is totally unlikable. And Nate called her out. Again. Loved it. He said, I did too. When he said that when all the women were at his house and they came running over there, she's over there getting shit started in other people's marriages and hanging out at the club. Lady, grow up. That's Horrible. True. She does not want that man. And she at all. The fuck out of him. Gaslighting the fuck out of him. I, I do have to say, I commend him more for having a little more balls now. For not breaking down and being like, I can't believe you said you know what? Yeah. Like, like, you know, now he's like, that's fucked up. That hurt my feelings. And, and he's to cry. That's what I was expecting him to cry. Right. Now he's kind of a little more hardened because he sees her. He sees he who knows. she is. He, he knows it. how she says one thing and then does another and she's like what are you talking about of course you know you don't, you don't want me to go out every no why are you going out everyone's like why would you go out every weekend and even on the what's talking back live she uh she was like um uh like i would stay home with she's like you know what's the problem with going out every weekend with you know could because he doesn't have any friends she said because okay. he doesn't have any friends i'm his only friend that's why, that's why uh, he don't he don't want me to go out. She goes Does out. Anybody every... call her out? Not really. That's and, why they watch it. And she, she's so manipulative. But I do like the fact that he's like, I'm not going for it anymore. But he's still attempt trying. But when he put the blindfold on, or whatever, and he told her the truth, you know, he said right away. But he's been saying that. He's been yep. saying that consistently. And she said, he hasn't been telling me how he really feels. And then when she says, first of all, you're, I like your family, blah, blah, blah. And didn't lay into him the way that she would normally do. Like when she said, I don't want, I'm not, I'm ready for marriage, but not married to him in front of Dr. Pia. 
which I can't, I do like her. She's, she's at least to a certain extent, she's pushed a little bit more mm-hmm. than Dr. Cal and, and Dr. Yeah, Cal. I agree. You know, I, yeah. She pushes a little bit more, even though she, on the Morgan thing, we'll get to that in a second, yeah. but she does push a little bit more about, well, what, how are you feeling this, that, and the other? But she don't like Justin at all. She don't not attracted to him. She don't want to be with him. She don't want to be near him. Nope. And he's getting the wind of that. And he's like, I don't know if I would want to be with someone like her. Tanya. Go ahead, girl. All right. I got my notes. Because I'm sorry. Alexis is fake as fuck. I'm just putting the shit on the table. <laughs> Can I just say something? Did you write that in your notes? I, bitch, I got my notes up in there. I wrote that in my fucking notes, too. <laughs> Fake as fuck. <laughs> Listen, I was like, I'm watching it and I'm like, Alexis is Alexis is fake as fuck, condescending and crazy and the worst. We thought, I, I'm going to speak for myself, not we. I thought that last season in Boston that, oh, I'm a good person was the oh. worst. Alexis is the worst. Alexis has problems. You think Alexis has that? problems. If yeah, you watch that, that, the episode, if if y'all want to go back, or anybody that's watching our podcast wants to go back and watch the episode, pay attention to Alexis's face anytime that Dr. Pia or Justin is addressing her. She went full on from oh, to like no bitch. When Dr. P showed up get away. and Dr. P was calling her on her bullshit and she's like, I just feel like I'm being attacked and this is that in my mental, she pulled the mental health card. Oh. I'm not saying that she doesn't have mental health issues because Dr. P asked her, let's go back to that. You, you brought up the mental health thing. What's going on there? No, because you're doing this. She didn't want to. She didn't like what she heard. That's what I got. She didn't like what what she heard and what was being told to her. Now she's going to pull this card of her mental health and her emotional stability and da da da. You know, you went, Dr. Pia and Justin, you went from talking about this. Now you're going to this. And you know, you're flip flopping on me, basically, in a nutshell, and I'm not dealing with this. That's what she went to. So let me fast forward because I got my notes. Um, she's the worst. I said that again. I'm gonna say it again. And um when when they put the, the blindfolds on, I was happy that Justin. She put her blindfold on or he put his blindfold on or I don't know how that worked. And he said what he needed to say to her. He threw it out there and she didn't like it. And she, her whole mentality changed. If you saw when she had the mask on, when he was talking, she did her whole bottom face changed. And I was like, there's something off with her. I don't know if, I don't know what her situation is. I don't know her, but there's something off with her. It's either her way or the highway. And let's get to the, uh, when he said what he said, I was like, thank you, Justin. You finally got that shit off your fucking chest. She didn't like it. And then she came back. He put the mask on and she's telling him, um, well, I can find it with someone else. If I'm not with you, I'll make someone else happy. To me, it sounded like a bye, bitch. I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. Oh, it. yeah. I'm out. Yep. And in the talk back, she said that they said that. Stasha said to her, well, it certainly sounded like you said you're done. Right. Bye. Mm-hmm. We're done here. We're done here. And then on top of that, Let's talk about, listen, this is a whole conversation. I am team Justin at this point. I, I know I talked about him with being too emotional and too like effeminate, whatever. But you like what you like. But I, I am team Justin with the whole, she wants to go to the club every week. Bitch, what do you want? Do you want a husband? Or do you want to be out in the street with your friends? Out in the street with your friends. 
She wants to be single. She wants right. to be single. She said, I can go, I can go Tuesday to Saturday night. Every night I can go out. She said that, remember? She yep. said, mm-hmm. I can go out. I got a lot of friends. You and she made she gave that little dig. I don't like the tit for tat digs. And she gave that dig to him. You don't got no friends here. I can go out every day of the week if I want to. I can go out from Tuesday to Saturday with my friends. And you're just sitting here. You just want to go out with me. And then I told you, why don't you come out with me? And he don't want to go out. And she's like, well, fuck you then. But I'm saying to myself, you're a fucking married woman. Look, why you got to go out every week? And then she made the comment. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm monopolizing. I'm sure somebody's going to no. comment on the podcast and say, you bitch. No, no, go ahead. No. no, no. I'm going to say this and I'm going to shut up. She said that, um, what did she say? She's like, I go out every week. And then she's like, I asked you to go out with me. And then she's like, oh, what, oh, this is what I, I, I lost my brain there for a minute. She's like, when I was in relationships in the past. That was ugly. She was like, all my friends, all my boyfriends or the relationships that I, that I was in, they were fun. Because we always used to go out all the time. Well, bitch, it didn't work. And you're married now. It didn't work. When you were with dating these guys and they were like, and you or they or you were like, let's go to the club. Let's go to the bar. Let's party. Let's do this. Great. But did it, did it turn into a marriage? No, bitch. And here she you go. How many times was she engaged? She said three times. I think so. I think That's it was like right. hear that. That's a lot of times to be a engaged. A long time ago. So I would like, yeah, but how old is she? Long time ago. Three times? Engaged three times? She's only what, 30, 31, maybe? Oh, so my thing is with her, her it's just like what you're saying, saying, um, Tanya. None of those things turn into marriages. Now, she says it's because she did not want to get married. Yeah. I would love to talk to, to them. Them, exactly. Out, because I see a lot of shit wrong with her. She's the homie. Let's just pull it. This looks called a spade a spade. She's the homie. She probably met some guy. All the guys that she dated, she probably met them while in the beginning. Let's go to the beginning when she was out there doing her flag football with her homeboys. And then they were like, oh, let me take you out. And then they take her out and she's out there fucking like, yeah, I'm the homie. And they look at her like the homie. They're not looking her at her as a romantic interest. Oh, bitch, I'll take you out. We'll go to the club. We'll go to the bar. We'll go to the restaurant and we'll do brunch and whatever with, with the crew. But bitch, no, I'm good. I'm gonna find my next girl. I would like here. to really see if she's and really gonna wipe her up. Mm-hmm. I, I want. I, I need to to talk to some friends of friends because she's oh. messy. She's messy, and I can yeah, see yeah. her being even in her friendships when shit goes down. It goes like, well, Alexis said. Well, Alexis said she. Because she can't keep her, she can't keep her mouth shut about other people. But she's messy, and she loves to get shit. Messy. No. Go ahead, Tanya. Pay attention to the body language with Alexis. I'm going to implore you two and everybody that watches our podcast. There are whole 200 people, maybe three, but we'll go there. We'll hopefully get it up. <laughs> but I'm saying, um. I'm going to implore you guys to pay attention to Alexis, Alexis's body language and her face. Look at her eyes specifically. Whenever somebody talks to her, whether it be the girls, the guys, or her husband, she literally turns that shit on and off quickly. Mm-hmm. If, she, if, if she likes what she's hearing, she's like, and if you say something she don't like or something pops off, it's like. She going to the streets immediately. Exactly. Yes. Her, her, her switch flips immediately. 
there's something off about her. I don't want to say anything as with, with, with regard to her mental health. She brought that shit up on the episode. I don't even believe well, that shit. I don't believe that shit. She just knows what cards to play yep. to make yep. people manipulate off. And Nate's got her card. Yeah. And Nate's like, she's manipulative and she's a snitch. And I loved every I loved every bit about that when he said that shit. She's a snitch. I Mind your business, you. bitch. Focus on your marriage. Don't worry about Morgan and Ben no, or anybody leave. else. Your worry marriage. about your marriage. Just leave it. Yes. Put that man out of his misery and just go on. Seriously. For real though. So and stop right. acting Do like stop, <clears throat> stop oh, acting like she yeah. said. She also said, <clears throat> we're, we both want this and we both are trying to work on it. No, you don't. You haven't from the beginning. Nope. Because if you, that was the case, when he talked to you on Hinge, you would have replied to him from the beginning. Mm -hmm. From before this thing, if you liked him and he asked you out and when you matched just because he was tall and you matched and he said, what's up? And you you didn't say anything, and he said, That's it. And she said, Yep. <laughs> From the pre-beginning of your marriage, she never wanted to be with him in the first place. No, no, enough said. Never, never. She has no attraction to him. I think she's in it just till the end because she wants to save face and yep. maybe gonna come up of you know the social media thing like all the rest of them do or she's doing it, it the wrong it. way mm -hmm. you are not making yourself likable to people we see who you are yeah Ugh. go ahead go ahead but Next. can i all right one final thing <laughs> i'm just being petty at this point on justin and alexis lord jesus justin i live for the fall I'm a Northeast girl, and I live for the fall with the gray sweatpants. I love my black men in their gray sweatpants because I'm like, ooh, sexy, sexy, daddy, daddy. Ew. He had on gray sweatpants in this episode, and I was like, oh, my bloody eyes. What? Did he look good? He was that? not attractive. Oh, Go back okay. and watch it. Okay. Like, when we say gray sweatpants, I'm like, ooh. Yes, daddy, daddy, bulge, bulge. Mm, 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 mm. I'm just a whore. I'm sorry. Not sorry. But I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah. And then I saw him in his gray sweatpants and I was like, oh, Justin, really? I didn't even notice. So obviously. I noticed. I noticed these things. I noticed these things. But I had to, I had to put it out there. All right. Who are we going to next? Pick a, pick a couple. L Lindy and Miguel. We can talk. I mean. Can we talk about Baby McGinty? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was hilarious. Baby McGinty. I love the name. McGinty. And you know what? He, he's into role play, so I knew he would love it. He was a little bit too much into it, though. But that, but he goes all in. He's a Doug, Dungeons and Dragon guy, and he's into cosplay and all that stuff. So he's gonna go in. Pretend world, he's all for it. I didn't take any notes on them, so I'm gonna leave this up. To I, no, I didn't take any notes there's, on them. There's no notes to take on them. Really nothing. First, she's all. She's all. Oh my god, the baby's cried over two hours. What? What? What you think a baby's gonna do? What? What do you? What do you think a baby? Do? It's a baby. A baby's gonna. Cry for two hours sometimes. That's part of having a baby. Yeah, that's appropriate. Damn it. I, I, I don't know what I would do if a baby cried for two hours. I got three. But it's a, every two hours. It's a program. Oh, every baby. two hours. Okay. I'm like, God damn. Two hours. I'm every two hours. The baby girl. cried every two. She said, the baby cried every two hours. I, I got nothing know. on them. This episode this week, I, I thought they were cute. I thought it was cute, and I literally chuckled when, um, uh, uh, oh my God, what's his name? Miguel. Miguel. Miguel showed up to the guy's basketball. volleyball or basketball thing, and he's holding the the baby in the carriage or the the carry on. I thought that was cute, 
and he was all into it. Like literally, he's sitting with the guys holding this fake ass baby with the yeah. fucking fake ass bottle in his mouth so that it doesn't cry. And I'm like, okay, Miguel, I like you. I like him. I still, I, right now they're my favorite couple because I just like their giddiness and I like their interactions with each other. But in my gut, I'm thinking Miguel is going to blow her world up. She is so involved with him and she wants him so much and she wants this. I think at the decision day, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm out. And she's going to fucking flatline. I mean, I from the previews, I'm guessing some drama is about to come. But I yes. still think that they actually make it. I hope so. She I definitely so. is all... She's all hands on deck with him. She It's crazy. But, and I actually like seeing that kind of giddiness for, I love it. So for for someone, I mean, even him to an extent. I mean, he was very chill this week. No kind of like, you know, um, side remarks like he was before. It wasn't a little, any kind of shade. I mean, they did. I, I agree with you. They did. They just had fun this week. And I like yeah. to see that. And I, yeah. and I said to you all before, I've grown to appreciate her more yeah. after understanding her story. I still have to see more. I'm not saying like I'm all on her bandwagon or anything, but I do like I do like the happiness that she exudes from being with him. So we'll have to see. I like it. Chris, yeah, I anything else to good. add to them? No. No. I don't <laughs> think so. I just, All right. Let's go. Yeah. Listen. I'm gonna I gotta go. I gotta go to I gotta go to Stasha and Nate because I was literally online today when I was watching the episode because I don't even know why I was online today because I'm not going to have anybody to use it with, but I want one of those goddamn swings to hang on the door. Oh, uh, that oh, sex okay. swing was everything. I like that swing. I want one. I actually one. don't know what you're talking about, but I'm guessing it's a sex swing because I missed that. I must have felt. Yes, it. it's a Sasha sex with swing. Sasha with yes. Sasha and me. Okay. I missed that. Oh yeah, it's a Shahida. It's a sex swing that literally hangs. You put it. Oh, on I know what it is. I just missed their interaction with oh, it. I didn't see that girl. Part. That was like I know what it is. Soft porn. <laughs> Listen, that whole scene was soft porn one on one, and I was really. I was all in my feelings. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. They put that shit on the door, oh, and then he he blind he blindfolded her, and then handcuffed her to the bed because it the, the, okay. Oh, was that part of their homework thing to do? Yes, because oh, she, okay. they wanted her to give up her um yeah. give up her control and let Nate take control of everything, and she mm -hmm. needs to trust him, and he did, and he got he them got her cute, up. He got them a cute little like love um cottage or whatever it is for the weekend mm -hmm. and the, of of course the experts left them a box there of goodies of intimate goodies and they had whipped cream strawberries chocolate syrup everything you name it and then they had the the, the handcuffs he handcuffed it to the bed and then he they had the strap up you know the harness on the door and she was, she was, she was loving that harness though. She was like, Ooh, what's this? What's it done? What's this? She put it on there. And then literally I'm like, okay, when's the camera is going to cut? I got to go back and watch. Oh, you got to watch. Cause I'm like, when is the camera is going to cut this shit? Cause I'm thinking like, okay, we don't really show all this much, but now we're they showing don't. everything. Yeah. They this show everything. That. And she was literally holding onto the harness with her legs both up there. I can't lift my legs up. I'm, 50, I'm a 54 year old woman. I can't do that shit no more unless I have that harness. So if anybody wants to send me the harness, send it this way. Um, and you have her legs what? in that part. Use it for oh. what, man? Yeah, exactly. Hanging <laughs> plants. What you gonna do? Put your put your make your sourdough sourdough rise a holder. What you gonna what you gonna use it for? <laughs> I can't. You guys 
Yes, I love it. I love how you keep me honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's going to be some the yeast in the sourdough, let the sourdough <laughs> swing back and forth. And you. Or I might, I might podcast from and be like, hey, hey, I'm coming live from my day. Have you ever let anybody tie you up or handcuff you? Me? Because that's, I can see why they would try that with her because, yeah, yeah. Have you ever done that? Yes. Of course I did. You, oh, so you don't have any issues with being like, you know. Oh, blindfolded. no, I have no issues with being blindfolded, like, like tied up. Listen, hey, take look, me. Look, this, is a, this, is look, look, this is a little fast. You said you have no issues. No, I have no issues with um something. <laughs> I have no issues with that. No, when I was watching it, I was giddy with her. Like she was so uncomfortable, but she was like uncomfortably doing it. comfortable. That's what I looked at her when I was like, she was like, eh, eh, eh. and I'm like, you are uncomfortably comfortable. And when he put that blanket over him and went downtown and he was like, it looked like, well, it looked like he was about to like munch the carpet, but she was like, what's going on? What's going on? She still had her leggings on. You saw her leggings. So he didn't do nothing, but he was like, I was like, Ooh, I was all feeling all that. Cause I'd have been like, and then me, and me after after party, she said she likes the scenes that were cut. She said she likes her toes sucked. So she's off in the shower cleaning her feet. Washing her feet. And then she hopped to the bed and he put chocolate syrup all over it. And they were all like, oh. They still together. They still together. Oh, they, she is a freak of leak. She don't want to give up that control, though. It's it, That's going to be the demise of them. I, I hope that they make no it. Demise. I think that they are working i mean to me i'm seeing them as people who consistently work at learning to communicate with each yep. other and get past issues so they might have like a uh, friction but i'm i'm impressed with their ability to work it out i agree with you i think that they're going to make it mm -hmm. but if it doesn't make it it's, it's going to be because of stasha at this point because yeah. next week, it could be a whole nother story. Yeah. But I'm thinking from the episode that I watched, I think that Nate has got his, he is just there. He's very clear about what he wants. He's not intimidated by her and her success. He wants this power couple. I think that if this marriage doesn't work this week, it's going to be because of her, because she's so self-absorbed and she wants to have control over, over everything. Yeah. I mean, how many, I mean, the man got his, got their wedding date tattooed on his hand. There's nothing that you can say to me. If I'm dating you or if I'm married to you and you're willing to get the tattoo, I'll never question your loyalty to me. I mean, you might cheat on me like Emu Udoka, but here I mean, are. like people get tattoos of their significant others all the time. That don't mean well, that doesn't. Well, that's I'm saying, a test. That is a you know that is like a. I have tattoos, and I'm saying to myself, all my all of my tattoos have a meaning. So for me, it's like if you get a tattoo, I would have never gotten a tattoo for her. No, I mean, sorry, not sorry. What's that? Oh, is that the tattoo of the woman who, who, who mm -hmm. tattooed your name? On We're her? recording. Watch your mouth. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just sort of, yes. Someone got my signature on there, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Let's see it again. That's your signature? Mm hmm. That's a nice signature. Thank you. Oh. Autograph. Anyway, oh. so, yeah. What so, you so, I have one thing to say oh, about yeah, her. Yeah. Who about Stasha. Stasha? Again, when they were sitting down talking with Dr. Pia and they were talking about her control issues and just learning to be able to um let go on somebody. How many years has this woman been in therapy? This shit didn't come up before. She may be working on it. It could have been worse before. <laughs> but here's the thing. Or maybe not have come up in a relationship before, as opposed to, you know, how it how it feeds into a relationship, as opposed to just being a personal control control person. You know what I mean? Like on, on her, 
like if you're in therapy, therapy with a re- in a relationship as opposed to being in therapy just on your own. So maybe right. the control right. the control yeah. issue didn't come up because she didn't have she wasn't really talking about someone who she wanted to be significant enough that it was going to affect her in a relationship. So maybe this is something new or no, it's that not. was just. It's not I okay. just feel like for her, for her wanting to get married and going to therapy to work on herself, that this is something that she would have kind of worked on before she made that. But you know what? Regardless, her therapist might just suck, but she's still in my mind. She's very open minded and she listens. Yes. Yeah, I so think they're gonna... supposed to correct whatever it is her behavior is to give her release. So I gotta give it to them too. I was the last couple of weeks I have been impressed with their growth. I still think yeah. he, I still think like he's a hustler, but that's not a bad thing. Not nope. a bad thing. Um, I have a couple of uncles, they hustlers, but they were good husbands. <laughs> oh, Shady as fuck, <laughs> but good husbands. Okay. But... <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that. I agree. I, 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 I do too. I do too. I, I am. Too. I, and I at this at this stage of the game, you know, I, as I keep saying, y'all know I was standing for Stasha, but I I like I still like Stasha, but I'm standing for Nate right now because Nate is showing his whole ass and he is being he's being upfront and he is just putting all the cards on the table. She may not like his presentation of how he's presenting it or how he's communicating to her but he's putting it all out there i like nate nate is going to have to do some fucked up shit for me to be like i'm not not feeling you yeah she's not trying to change him which i know she wants him to be a certain way but from what i can see she is more into trying to understand how he is and work with that instead of trying to change change him. him. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I have to re- totally respect her for that. That's why I'm like yeah. saying I don't get the whole part that it, it the demise will be on her because she's really shown a lot of growth. And she has, but I think she's. I, I'm just thinking that she's not going to be willing to give up her control. And I think she will for think she will. for her marriage. She will. We'll see. I'm hoping that I'm wrong because I'm rooting for them. I really want them to win. And I really want them to be the couple after this season's over that I'm like, oh, I'm following. We following on Instagram and TikTok and everything. And they're making all their money and doing their most. What she will figure out is there is, and, and he'll figure out too, there are things that he's going to let her control. Right. And, and, and things that she, will have to compromise on because she's she's not never going to lose that controlling part of her but in her marriage there are going to be things that she can control and she's going and and she'll have co- and he'll give it to her he'll give right. it to her but then she's going to have to learn to give him that control over That's certain right. things and i think she's smart enough to realize that let's hope we'll see We'll see. We should All see right. who's, who's next. All right. So, who do we want to go to next? Do we want to? Do we want to go to Morgan and Ben, or go to Mitch and Kristen? Let's go to Morgan and Ben because I'm just I'm just making the the decision because. Well, I go guess. ahead. Well, go ahead, bossy pants. Oh, girl, you already know. You already know somebody's gonna comment on our on our YouTube and be like, "Bitch, you just said that, and you don't let nobody talk, and you already made the decision." Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Who's talking about Mitch? Who's talking about Morgan and Ben? Morgan and Ben, you said. Go oh, ahead. you know what? Let me let me let me start. Let me let me start. Let me start. Let me start. Go ahead, because you know I have a thing with Morgan. First of all. Ben, if he just, I, I just wish he would grow some balls. Just, y- y- why can't you see that she, first of all, trying to, I was trying to explain to my friend why they have a disagreement. And I'm like, well, first of all, he said that he talked to his friend and he didn't know if she was a real nurse. That's the first part, mm-hmm. right? And the second part, was that he was just talking about the relationship. 
those are the only two things that's, that's it in this relationship and she has taken it to defcon as they say on star trek defcon 10 or whatever the fact that <laughs> no she didn't if he had said to her if he had said to justin she was molested by her parents and this that and the other i get that if he had said um she has two vaginas and that i get that whatever something private personal only my husband should know he he was confused about whether she was a real nurse or not period then the second time he was just talking about their relationship and she didn't want him to talk to him about anything about anything nothing and between those two things she has made this a federal a, like someone shoplifting at a target and now they're in jail for 25 years for whatever a pencil a pencil <laughs> and some crayola crayon and still still <laughs> telling judge he committed the crime and he's like yes i did still steal the pencil from Tar she Lock the door and is, throw the away. she does not want to be married to him she don't want to be married she don't want to be she married she don't want to be married. She don't want to be married to him. She's not even forgiving anything. Oh, you apologize, but you didn't apologize with feeling. Emotional mm -hmm. apology. That's the key word of the week. I need to That's feel it. Emotional apology. I'm I sorry. need to feel. No, I need to feel your apology. He already apologized. How many times does he have to apologize to you? She's the worst. She's, she's for me. She's the worst. Because if she would just said, you know what? I really don't. She's whole clinging on to this thing that is like. Well, why really? is nobody calling her on and it? Pia, and that's what I'm saying. Pia, Dr. Pia did not call her out at all. At all. And then Mindy, or whatever her name is, was like, I feel so bad for you because he's just not on the same emotional wavelength yeah, as you Lin are. What, it was Lindy. Lindy, whatever. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, really, really? Everyone, yeah, and Morgan, that edifies her. That makes her even stronger. It's like making the Hulk, giving the Hulk more anger. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're ugly too. And now it's like, really? Off of, off of you told the Hulk, the Hulk, you know, I don't like the, I don't like the color of your hair. Now the Hulk is like, she's the worst. She is the worst. And he's still contrite and like, I just went away from my problems. But it was revealing when he said she reminds him of my dad. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, you know, because she's physically, he said physically too. Yeah. Physically and strong and is one of the strong and reminds of her dad. She has not one ounce of sensitivity to his None. feelings or how he's at all. None. And nobody's calling her out on that. At all. This at all. man is so broken. And he's like, he, if this marriage doesn't work out, I'll be devastated. Why? You were happier before this marriage. You had to be. Because this woman has made you nothing but miserable since she's came into the picture. And the fact that Dr. Pia and um, the other doctor, what's her name? Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Neither of them have recognized. You say you're watching the show with us or, or you've been watching along and you know what's going on. Neither of them have addressed how beaten up this per this person is. He is beaten up. And to, to take everything that she says internally, and he still feels like he, he should be apologizing to her. Yes. And he sat there on that end of that couch with those fucking fake tears. And what he did to me is inexcusable. Nobody. Over and about. over and over again. I'm so sorry. And select is his fault. It's he didn't do anything. He didn't do one thing directly to her. Not no. one thing. Oh, he did give her roses, and she and she threw them away. Go ahead, Tanya. Can we just not address? The, I mean, let's just address the fact that the reason why this all went down is because of her. 
Like she needs to own that. Like, bitch, you lied. Like, listen, as a nurse, you can have an associate's degree and still be a nurse. You may, you may not make as much as a bachelor's of nursing person does, but you are still a nurse. We still do, we still do the same job. I've been saying this over and over again. She is the one that put that out there with the bachelor's of nursing. How do you expect anybody to know what you do for a living he is an engineer. He knows nothing about health care. So when you say to him, I'm a nurse. Oh, and then in the background, you and then again, you say to him, oh, well, I didn't get my bachelor's. I'm still a nurse, but I didn't get my bachelor's. He's going to be, and, but he's going to be like, oh, well, are you a nurse or what? He's wrong. They're both equally wrong. He's wrong for going and talking to other people about it. No, but he talked to one person. It's like they told the group. He told one person. But I'm, that's what I'm saying. The one person's he, he's wrong for talking to other people, but sh that's on her. That's what I was saying. That's her mess that she made. But I don't think he's wrong for talking to other people. No, he's not wrong he's for talking, talking to other people. I mean, he's, he's I, I guess I said that wrong. Yeah, he's, he's not, not wrong, wrong for talking to other people. Or confiding in his friends, right? And confiding in other people, because at the end of the day, when you're married to someone, or you're dating someone, or you just like someone, you still have your crew or their crew or whoever the fuck crew that you can go to and talk to and ask questions of. I welcome that, but she. I've said this before. She hold, she bears that responsibility because she put that shit out there. Uh, I guess with the whole married at first sight thing, was he wrong for going behind her back and talking to Justin? Maybe. Yeah. I might feel some sort of way. But at the end of the day, I might feel some sort of way, but I'm going to own it after the fact and say, well... You told the man that I wasn't a real nurse, but let me sit your ass down and let me explain to you. And he did that. She did that. He he and did he that. Apologized. Yeah. And she's not letting it go. She wants this whole emotional apology. She's like, I want an emotional apology. Well, you're not going to get that from him. He is of a he's of he comes from a culture. You gotta you gotta be you gotta be respectful of people's culture. You can't. Expect him to grovel. That's, I think, what she wants. I he guess. has been groveling, though. He's been groveling, He's but been I think she wants more. I think she wants, him, she want. I think she wants him to shed some tears and literally break down and beg her for her forgiveness. And if he hey. is a smart man, he ain't gonna do that shit. You listen. Right. You didn't beat her. You didn't cheat on her. You didn't cuss her out and disrespect her in any way, shape or form. Y'all just had a misunderstanding. This is where I'm coming from on this one. It was just a straight up misunderstanding that she took it and ran with it. And you know what? If Alexis hadn't said anything the second time, she would have nothing to, nothing to keep going back to. Nope. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Nope. You right. I'm just disappointed in the in the professionals because mm -hmm. okay, you know how like the producer came in when um when Justin and Alexis were arguing like okay, what's you know, I was like okay, good. They're on it. They're trying to monitor. How come nobody has come in and checked her ass? Anyway, I that's all I have on them too because it's just it's the same week and I'm tired of seeing him this this dog on week and I'm Tired yeah. of seeing him internalize all this crap that she's trying to make him feel. And you know what, bitch? If you're that unhappy, just go. Just go. Right. You're not already. You're already not in living in the same place. Just say you're done. Be done. Right. I was hoping that this episode she would have just walked and been like she would have pulled a fucking Chris Colette. She wants to break him more. 
this is my decision day and I'm mm -hmm. done. I want out. I was hoping that would have happened, but she softened herself a little bit. I'll give her some credit. She softened herself a little bit. When for the doctor. To hmm? Only for, doc for the doctor. Of course. Mm -hmm. But she did. And she looked at him because I was watching the body language and she looked at him. She wants that. But I'm saying to myself, how many more times does this man have to grovel and beg for your forgiveness? for something Until until, until the end. Yeah. For something she'll bring that the, wasn't even She would bring this up six years later. Right. Yeah. You're right on that one, Chris. She's never going to let that go. And we already know, or I shouldn't say we, I'm speaking for myself. I already know. The way that he looks at her, she is not his type. She is not the soft. He needs a soft, submissive, kind, kind, kind woman, loving woman that's going to be and like. He doesn't, oh, submissive. he doesn't need. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say submissive. He looks like the type that he needs that. Why? No, I don't think mean, there's anything wrong with being submissive because I can be submissive if I, if I find the right. I person. don't think he needs submissive. He's think. more submissive than anything else. I think he's. I think he's scared. I think I he's. Think a, he's I think he's. A, I think he needs someone who may be strong but kind and sweet right. and nice, like Kristen. If he had Kristen and Mitch, if he had someone like Kristen who was like this, that, and the other, and they, they would be great together. Really? No, I, I think so. That. Yeah, I, I think he would be great with um Lindy as well. Yeah, I Lindy would say Lindy energy would not just Kristen. match his energy. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Lindy, but not Christy. I think he needs somebody that's accommodating and and submissive, that's, that's, and he's he's listen. I'm Chris just saying, is accommodating. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what I think that he needs. Because more but usually you're saying, but usually down. someone who needs someone to accommodate is a dominant person. He's not a dominant person. So why would two submissives be? No, he needs someone who is either going to be kind to him or what, on his level or whatever, but I don't think he needs someone listening to everything he does because if he was that way, he'd have been like, Morgan, shut the, I, I gave you my apology. I'm not going to give you another apology. And she'd have been like, oh, oh, okay. But he's like, oh, okay. So you need something more more emotional? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, no, he, he if he was dominant, he'd be like, no. I, look, I don't know why you, you're still holding on to this. Do you want to continue this relationship or not? If you don't, let's call it a day and go through the exercise. If you do, then let's work on it. But stop doing this game. If that's what a dominant person would say. But he's so so submissive and so. Oh, what do you? What do you, I'm sorry. What do you need? Uh, 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 anyway, I didn't say that he was submissive. <clears throat> I was saying he needs a submissive. And yeah, I'm but that's what I'm, that's the point of two submissives. Two submissives are, are not. It's a dominant and submissive, or a mm -hmm. dominant submissive. Then he needs someone on his equal level, but not a dominant person likes a submissive person, and a submissive person likes a dominant person. A submissive person is not necessarily going to get along with another submissive person because they'll both be going, "Oh, do you want? To, no, no. Do you want? Oh, oh, no. Do you? As opposed to, I want that. Yeah, here you go. Yeah." You're right. Yeah. That's true. what I'm that's what I'm saying. I think he needs someone on his equal level or or dominant because he's not dominant. Yeah, because yeah. he can definitely deal with dominant, but like you said, they have to be kind. A kind. Exactly. She's yeah. not a kind dominant person. Like you're yeah. you're a dominant person, but you would be kind to him. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She's a brute. That's all mm -hmm. I'm gonna say. She's like Bluto from Popeye. She's like Bluto. <laughs> like she walks in. Every time she walks in somewhere, it's like, hum, 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 hum. I'm going to punch you. That's what I get when I see Morgan. That's you said all. I'm going to punch you? Like, <laughs> like, hum, I'm going to kickbox you. I'm going to kickbox you. <laughs> I'm going to punch you. All right. right. Who's, who's next? The last um, one. The final, Mitch and Kristen. And the only thing I have to say, I the only note I have left is Listen to me. She got on my nerves. No, we week. literally watched. Maybe I just took it wrong. We literally watched Kristen lose herself on this episode. We watched the life sucked out of Kristen because 
go back to the beginning. Uh She was so perky. She was so loving. She was so energetic. And now every episode, her eyes are bloodshot. She's always complaining. She's she has lost herself with him. And each episode, I'm like, when is somebody when is an expert gonna come in and rescue this bitch? But even though I know it's not gonna happen, I don't know why I'm saying this, because it's not gonna happen because it's good TV. But I'm like, but why are you doing why a whole lot from this woman to this bullshit of this man? Oh, I got to disagree say. to a point because for for this week anyway, um, I didn't see him as doing so much as her just whining over everything. And maybe it was just like, okay, the whole the conversation, the conversation with, I'm sorry, the conversation with the hero. Who was your hero? <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? I don't know. That shit was funny to me. <laughs> he said, Why is it funny to you? <laughs> I liked it. And I he respected said, it for it. He said, you thought about that? You thought about your mother like that at eight years old? And I was thinking the same. <laughs> See you trifling. Okay. Wait, okay. All right. So and you sitting over there wiping your tears over that trifling ass shit. Terrible, Shahida. Shame on shame. Okay, all right. I'm together. I don't okay. I thought it was funny because she started getting upset because he said you thought about your mother? That way, <laughs> when you was eight years old, when you was what? You know, when you was eight years old, and they were talking about a hero, and like, and then when she was like, when somebody just says who their hero is, you should just like, I'm sorry, I don't know why I thought that shit was funny. <laughs> somebody else take it because I'm done. I can't even. I can't even. Talk. <laughs> I love it, Gee, You are literally over there weeping. I would. I was. I, I, I'll say this. I was on. I was on Team Kristen because she said, "I'm being vulnerable at this moment. I'm talking about my mom." And there you are over there holding your throat. I I liked everything that she said, and then he had to come back, and I agree with her. Motherfucker, all you had to do was shut your fucking mouth. Why do you have to come back with some shit and question me on that shit? But that'd be some shit you would do, Shahida. That's why you over there fucking oh, lolly I agree. It, and I ain't got nothing to say. Me too. I agree with you. And it was like, he should know to be quiet on some things. But he I don't doesn't know how to. I don't know why that was so funny to me because was... here we are. Chris, go ahead. Um, I, I think Mitch is just a very shiny book cracking out. He's just a very linear thinker. He's just very yeah. linear. And and, He's and an asshole. he doesn't he doesn't know any better. <laughs> yes, he and does. I no, think- I think he generally thought that that was a legitimate question. Like you didn't answer the question. You know, <laughs> you didn't answer the question, and she's like, "Well, my mother, so and so," and he and he's like, "But that's not what they, that's not what she asked you." And then she got offended because she thought that he didn't like her answer of the mother, as opposed to just didn't answer the question. That's that's what the problem was. My chest is killing. <laughs> mm. But the so, question, the question was, who is your favorite hero or heroine and he made the comment as he's looking he's like hero heroine you know, or, old. he's like does that say heroin when you're eight years old is that the it. question was that the question when you were eight years old yes when you were eight years old oh was that the question when you were eight years old yes 
I just thought the question was, who's your favorite hero or heroine? I'm going to have to go back and look at that shit. Go back and watch, because I thought it was. I got to go back and pull that up because I thought the question was, who's your favorite hero or heroine and why? And he was talking about his, you know, caricatures, his, you know, uh, Marvel people that he liked. Oh, I didn't know. I, I may be wrong. And I'm gonna, I'll am i wait because I know Chris is, I see Chris's face. He's looking it up. So I already know Chris is going to pull that shit up because I could be wrong because I took it as of who's your hero? Who is your hero or heroine and why? I didn't see it eight because that, and, and at the end of the day, before Chris pulls that up, while he's pulling it up, that's a stupid ass question because do we really listen? I don't know what the fuck I did yesterday. Don't I ask me. Who my, my hero was at eight. Mm, fine. You want to fucking oh, okay? Go ahead. Who's Wonder your Woman. hero at eight? I was all into Wonder Woman. Good for you. I don't you know like shit when I was eight. <laughs> I don't know shit when I was eight. I don't know what the TV shows was on the TV. Maybe I'm, I was wrong. Eight. Maybe I'm wrong, but the fact that he brought it back to that and he asked her that question and she just got, you know. She but but in, in, in fairness to her, he should have shut his mouth. She didn't utter a word when he was talking about his Marvel comics and his superhero shit. She didn't say shit. She might have looked at him like, really? Like, that's some dumbass shit. When let her say her piece and not interject your fucking. But, but he really. Who, who is your childhood idol? That's what it was. Yeah. By questioning her childhood idol. Childhood idol. On the verge of living myths and should do immediately. Fans think she should leave immediately. Kristen is asked about her childhood hero when sitting down with Mitch. Kristen recalls that her mother raised her and her sisters. Says that her mother is a Cuban immigrant. I don't know her. She's, she got some flavor yeah. in her. Oh, she don't look, don't seem like it. Oh, no, I knew her mother. That very I high up in the company as a result of hard work and patience. Day. Mitch doesn't simply stop there. He doesn't want to challenge Kristen, but he wonders why she felt the same way as a child, given that this exercise is about her childhood idol. Yes, I did. When asked about her reaction to Mitch, Kristen, why are you challenging me that? I just thought it was a good question, he says. He stumbles over his words, which doesn't help the matter. When somebody answers a question, especially about their childhood hero, you don't question it, she asked Mitch. You don't question it. Uh, so that she doesn't that. want, yeah. I, I just want you to say that sounds amazing. What a great story! But he doesn't say that. Uh, fans were quick to call Mitch out for the way he responded, calling him insecure yep. with his own answer. Mitch was just yep. mad because his answer made no sense. Who did he say? He said some superhero. He was talking about superheroes like Batman, Robin, and all them shit. Yeah. What all that, mean? all that fantasy. Because shit. I'm telling you, Mitch is literal, literal. He is. He's mad he because is. his answer made like Christian answer question wrong. Right that he's, I don't care that he's literal, you know? but at the end of the day, so if he says he that hero when he was a him. kid, I would say Batman or Super. I would say Batman. My hero really? as a kid was Batman. No, I wouldn't. You My, I, you would, I, I'm I, talking I, as a man, I, as a literal man. If you said who is what what hero did you like growing up? I'd be like Batman, Superman. I was really into superheroes. Who would you say? Anyway. Me? Yeah, Tanya, yeah. yeah. I would say the same shit as Kristen. I'm looking at, listen, I, listen, when you say to me, who was your heroes as a child? As a child, I got to look at my life. And that, I, I related to Kristen on that. Her dad wasn't around, even though she has a relationship with her dad. I didn't. She, her mother basically took care of her and her siblings. That's a superhero. For me, I I got that. Okay. I, I mean, I get, it. I get it. it. And even though I've watched TV, I like Wonder Woman. I liked all those shows, Batman, Robin, and all that. But that was fiction and fantasy for me. For me, when you, when you ask me, who's your... when you, you can't ask me a question about heroes. Because for me... I'm not looking at fictional characters. That's that's a, that's all fantasy for me. 
But even if I was looking at like non-fictional characters, it probably would have been something, somebody like Harriet Tubman or, you know, some, a book I read on his, I probably would not, I, pro- I, I honestly probably wouldn't have said my mother, even though I know my mother is a hero. But at that time, she was just my mom and, and she taking care of me was just, that's your job. <laughs> no, I agree with you. But, um, I agree with you. But, but my gra- I would have said my grandmother would have been if, if that question was posed to me, I would have said my grandmother and no shade to my mother. Because my yeah, mother I, I could, I had to work, my mother. mother had to work two, three, four jobs to take care of me and my brother. But at the end of the day, my grandmother was in the house and she basically raised me and my brother. Even though she had a job, she raised us and she didn't have to. Yeah. You know who I, when I was a when I was a young teenager who I wanted to be who I wanted to be when I grew up who I wanted to be my sister's ex boyfriend or they went out for a little bit his name was Butch Graves uh-huh. who was went to Yale we're still recording now you really want to say that shit <laughs> why not go ahead I want to hear I'm just saying he's talking and I'm saying to myself oh Lord Jesus okay go ahead. Here we go. he's why? talking just he was. Uh, he was, he went to Yale. He was six, five, six, six. He would play for the Yale basketball team. He got drafted in the second round by the Philadelphia 76ers. And he was uh, Earl Graves, son. And he ended up running black enterprise, not, uh, you know, helping run black enterprise. I know that. Yeah, I know. But he went, but he went to, Yale. he was an, and he was a nice guy and it was really cool. But I was like, I want to go to Yale and be a basketball player and get drafted by his, you know, like, I was like, oh, that's like, that was like a, I was like, oh, that's a great, I mean, to go to, to be smart enough to go to Yale and mm-hmm. bad enough to be, and play for Yale basketball and, and get drafted by the Sixers in the second round and be, you know what I mean? I was like, which graves is, my, yeah, anyway. But um, right. you went to, you went to Georgetown, so. I didn't play basketball though. Same. And but I didn't get drafted. I didn't get, I didn't get drafted by the six Sixers as a cheerleader. Well. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You still went to Georgetown, which is an Ivy League school. Is Georgetown an Ivy League school? We we rejected the Ivy Leagues because we're a Catholic school. Well, so I don't know. Anyway. I just thought that Georgetown was always a great college to go to if you can get. So it. I I don't know I don't know I don't know if they're they're going to make it. That's on the fence for me. Yeah. So that, that, for me I, for me ranking for me ranking, I think Stasia and Nate are number one. They're going to make it. Mm-hmm, I yeah. think two is uh, Lindy and Miguel. I yeah. think three is Kristen and and Mitch. I think four is Justin and Alexis, and then five is is Morgan and Ben. I think that at this point, for me, for um, for Mitch and Kristen is Kristen. You're not happy. You're not going to be happy. Um, and I, I don't dislike Mitch as much as I did before. I do think he's still like a, a, a he got asshole tendencies or whatever. But is he workable? I think he is workable. Can he be? I won't say fixed, but there is a part of him that, like she says, basically he's a good guy. You mm-hmm. can't say that he's not a good guy. Right. Yep, he has some assholic tendencies or whatever, but. They can be smoothed over. But if she can't get a hold of herself and her emotions, she's not going to be able to deal with him. So for her to be happy, she needs to just kind of like move on. But I do think that they would work because he seems to be willing to want to work too. And he does listen. He says too many of the right things sometimes and not enough action behind it. I still need to see a little bit more action behind the words, but I do think he's workable. Um, but she she whined too much for me in this episode, and I just got sick and tired of her. And so when she started talking about her childhood and crying, it just made me fucking laugh. <laughs> so the rest of the couples who make you one person. <laughs> so, what? so you, do, do you agree on those rankings? Yeah, basically, because I don't think that I don't think the bottom three are going to make it. Right. So I think the only couples that are going to make it are um, Stasha and Stasha and Nate, Lindy and Miguel, 
And I kind of think that Kristen and him at least say yes, whether or not they're still together. But I do think they say yes. But the, the last two couples, not at all. Mm-mm. Not at all. Tanya? Oh, okay. I think that... Where, where, where did you go? <laughs> She's oh, thinking I'm about sourdough kidding. right now. She's like this. I have a complex. I'm waiting because everybody keeps telling me I keep cutting in and shut my mouth. Um, I think that Justin, let me go. Okay, one. Justin and Alexis are going to make it to decision day. And I think it's going to be, I think Alexis is going to say no. Justin's going to say yes because he's Justin. I don't think he's, I don't think Justin, he's not going to say yes anymore. No, I don't know. I think that he's going to be all in and she's going to say no. That's my nope. my opinion. Okay. That's Justin and Alexis. Um, Lindy and Miguel, I think that she's going to say yes. And he is going to say no at decision day. I think he's going to realize, I think he's in this fantasy right now with her and loving the fact that she is just all enamored with him and mm-hmm. loving everything that he says. Like, there's nothing that that man can't say that she's like, ah. she loves that. He loves it for now. I don't think he wants to live a lifetime with that. I think she's going to say yes. He's going to say no. And I think that's going to be the most dramatic decision day ever in married at first sight history because she's going to say yes and be all in love with him and he's going to say no and she's going to fucking blow her head's going to explode but that's what i'd like to say anyway um stasha and nate i think they're both going to say yes they're going to go through some trials and tribulations but i think they're both going to say yes and i think they're both going to make it um, Kristen and Mitch, I don't even think they're going to make it to decision day. Wow. Really? No. Why, why would they not make, make it? To- There's only two. I don't days. know. I think that, I mean, I might be wrong. Let me, let me rewind that back. I take that back. Everybody. I think they will make it to decision day because of course I've seen the previews and I've seen the decision day previews and I've seen them sitting on the couch. So they will make it to decision day. I think that um, Mitch is going to have to grovel and beg for her forgiveness and beg and, and tell her how much he loves her and how much he wants to be with her. And she's going to be like, okay. And I think she's, I think they're going to say yes, because, you know, she went through that whole shit with her first marriage with the husband that supposed husband that cheated on her with her friend and whatever, they didn't get to the marriage. So I think she's going to do that. Ben, Ben and Morgan, that's a done deal. That shit ain't getting them. I don't even think that shit's going to more marriage, a decision day. I think that shit is going to go to a week, maybe two. And then they're going to end that shit. Because it's just, it's a fucking train wreck. Those two are a train wreck right now. I'm tired of seeing them. Yeah. All right. I don't think it's going to work. That's everybody. So that's everybody for me. Um, anything else, Chris? You just had. A wonderful thing at your house. Let's talk about your organization. And do you guys um, take donations? I'll let you take the floor. Talk about it. Barry, Barry, where would people send donations for I Am Able? I am where able. would people send donations for I Am Able? Tell us about I Am Able. Hold on a second. You ready? Tell us about Tell- it. Hi. This is Barry. Barry. You said Barry? Yeah. Hi, Barry. I'm Tanya. Hi. I, I can't, I can't, we can't hear you. It's, it's a little bit low. 
Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah, all, right, yeah. good. all right. So Barry and Chris, tell us a little bit about your organization <laughs> that you just had the other day at your house, Chris, and let the family know what, what, what can we do to donate to it if we can donate to it and tell us a little background about the organization. Go ahead, Barry. Of course you can donate. We would love to have your support. Uh, I was a special educator for 34 years. So I worked with kids with learning differences, the ADHD, the dyslexia, dysgraphia, um, autism to emotional issues, uh, ADHD. So I'm very, very passionate about helping and continuing on. So this is my mission after I retired from teaching is to continue because we have adults who are still struggling coming out and talking about their learning difference. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, it could be an invisible disability. It could be, an in, we're trying to use the terminology invisible differences. And it's about empowering everyone to feel comfortable to talk about it and to embrace it because they have so many gifts and they think differently and they know how to problem solve sometimes very differently outside the box. And we as a society need to embrace that as well. So what we wanna do is work through school age all the way up um, to corporations and because people still struggle telling their bosses that they have a learning difference and you not, know, not a disability. I have ADD. So, right. So that's why you, we use the term invisible d differences. Um, and we just feel like using storytelling and we're creating these empowerment groups where people could just, who are neurodiverse, which is another uh, terminology that actually has become that encumbers on, you know, it, it, you know, ADHD, dyslexia, you know, learning disability, and you know, autism as well. So, the neurodiverse community, we want to create these uh, empowerment groups where neurodiverse community could get together and share their stories and support each other, and right. talk about again finding out that they're not alone. Um, some adults have never shared their story before. So um, we hosted an event yesterday in my house uh -huh. and taped it and we'll disseminate it, you know, to so people right. can watch and hear people who are successful with learning differences. Right. And uh, so people can feel more included if they have learning differences and not to be shamed about being different. So if you have to donate. Yes. You can go to, it's called I Am Able Foundation. And I it is foundation. I Am Able Foundation dot org. Dot org. Okay. Now you have to spell it out I A M Foundation dot org because there's another. I Am Able. Yeah. Oh, did I not say I A M A B L E Foundation dot that's no, all right. This is gonna Chris is gonna give us the send text us the website mm -hmm. and we'll put it on the page so that we can put it out there and people can donate. I love what you guys do because um I, I hadn't heard about that and what, what you and Chris are doing um until I saw his post yesterday. And I love what you're doing because my mom is a retired teacher in the Boston public school system for like 35 years. So she would be enamored by that. By that. And I love the fact that I, I just have a certain level of respect for educators and people that think of, you know, the children and making sure that they're good and you know they're educated so i love that well let me add too because i understand especially if you're working with adults how those stories need to be told i worked with a um, young man um, in finance a couple of years ago and of course you know 
you can't ask a person if they have any type of learning disability, but you could tell that he had autism, but his parents did a great job with working with him. You could see him like concentrating on listening to for cues to know how to respond to you. And my granddaughter who is seven, she's autistic. And so right now she's, she's at seven, you would say nonverbal. She says certain things, but one of the things that, you know, we're all trying to work with her is to get her verbal, but then how is she going to be five, 10 years from now, you know, and as an adult programs like this can like help, you know, ensure that she has a community to fall mm-hmm. back on. And that's very important to me other than just having family because you definitely need to have peers and then people to help guide you in these type of programs. And I didn't know, Chris, that you had, you were doing anything like this. And, and, and it's, I volunteer here in Rhode Island, but only with children, nothing on like an adult level. But I've been thinking more about the adult level because I know Autumn is getting older and she's going to need, you know, that kind of support. So definitely we will be donating to your organization. And I cannot wait to see the content that you all, you know, made yesterday, you know. And let's take it, let's take it. To the East Coast. I mean, they're in the West Coast. We're on the East Coast. She's in Chicago. And I'm in, from Chicago. We're in Chicago. Also oh, West. Okay, so West. What is it's Midwest, national, right? Midwest. Yes, this is going to be national. This was our mm-hmm. first time doing it. And, uh, you know, we wanted to get some film so that we could, you know, it's going to take a couple weeks to get edited, but then we're going to put it on our website and, you know, show that this is what we would like to do and we can create uh, these uh, groups anywhere, Mm -hmm. you know, just with talking with us and how we feel that we believe it should be done in a way, in a certain manner, because again, it's it's about embracing and it's about empowering and feeling comfortable with who you are and sharing. And then you find out that there's other people who are like, oh my God, I didn't, I, I was able to relate to that when I was a kid and it never, she just, it was like a aha moment for her Yeah. Uh, yesterday when we were talking about it. So it was just very interesting to be behind the scenes and watch it. And that's, that's the cool thing for me because that's where I get the enjoyment to knowing that I could help other people this way. Yeah. Well, you're in Chicago. Chris is in Cali. I'm in Massachusetts. Shahida is in Rhode Island. We're East Coast girls. So listen, if you ever want to bring it this way, just talk to Chris. He'll talk to us or Chris will give us give you our information and you can reach out to us. We'd love to start something here and, you know, keep it moving and just keep it growing. So We'll, we'll get the website from Chris and we'll put it on our YouTube and on our uh, podcast and on our website yeah. and Facebook and everything. And we'll, we'll ask folks to donate. Um, but we love what you guys are doing. And Chris, you know, we love you anyway. So, but we love the fact that you look back. Doing good works and not telling people, but okay. Right. <laughs> so we're going to end this podcast now and we're just going to, Sing your song. Next week, you know, I got to do my do, 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 do. Everybody wave. Everybody give me some fingers, jazz fingers. Do, 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 do